Today we are taking our reading from the book of Acts, the third chapter. Um, the story is a very remarkable story uh, that we read in the book of Acts, chapter 3, from verse 1 up to verse 10, and then uh, we will emphasize our text being uh, chapter 3, verse 6. And uh, we will uh, look at a, a few things. Now, last week I, I was sharing with you precisely um, on the importance of having an open ear. And then uh, once your ear is opened, you hear and then you believe uh, and then you obey and then you act uh, on what you believe. And, and then you'll be able to see the remarkable results of the power of the kingdom of God. Uh, we talked a lot about that, uh, and, but today I want us to uh, continue on this uh, wonderful subject that I am sharing you. Such as we have, we give. Such as we have, we give. You can go ahead and read, Elder. Thank you. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Peter and John went to the temple in one afternoon to take part in the three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently and said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and held him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then, walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often in the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. Praise the Lord. On this uh, uh, passage of scripture, we have a lot of things that we can study and learn and also to discover the truth about uh, the word of God. But uh, today, I am talking about this man uh, because uh, there are a lot of things that we need to learn from the word of God. The Bible tells us about the story in the story how that this man used to be carried to a place where he anticipated to be receiving alms from people and gifts in the form of money. It was his usual thing for him to go by the gate of the temple so that he would get some gifts from men as they come to worship God. But it's like it had happened for a long time and he was surviving out of that. You know, sometimes when you are used to something that you do so often in order for you to catch up with life, sometimes you will not be able to project and be able to understand what exactly is your need. But I want to thank God because in this narration, we begin to see that even though this man had a place where he usually uh, was positioned to be able to receive or to get what he wanted to get from those that were coming to worship God, on this particular day, it was a unique day to him because when he was expecting to get money, he did not get the money that he wanted to get. But he actually got what he was in need of. The man was not just in need of money, 
the man was in need of his miracle to be delivered from the kind of life that he was depending upon others instead of depending upon himself. Now God allows you and I to understand that God wants us to live as free moral agents. God does not want us to live having a string tied on us so that somebody keeps on dragging us with that string. God wants us to live independently and be able to do what we can do on our own instead of depending on others all the time. Hmm. I've often heard people saying, uh, please pray for us, please pray for us, please do this for me, please help me with this, please help me. God wants us, yes, to be receiving assistance from other people, but God requires us to function as an entity, as a single human being, as an individual. God wants you to function in your fullest. What this man lacked was not only money, he was paralyzed, he was crippled. That was his basic need. Money, yes, anybody can lack money at any given time. But his actual need was that he wanted to receive a miracle of deliverance from the power of God. There are things that we can get from money. There are things that we can redeem by using money. There are things that we can get by using our energy. There are things that we can get by knowing how to act and how to behave. There are things that we can get through our talents, our diversity in terms of talents. You can be doing some things that will make you have a lot of money. There are a lot of things that we can do. But I want to say to you, on this particular day, the man was expecting to get money, gold. God is not in a business of giving people money every day. Amen. But God can stretch out his hand to give you what you need specifically for you to move on. And that's the thing that I have always desired, to see God providing my actual need more than the other things that I think I need in this life. So this man was seated there, and all of a sudden, Peter and John, as their usual thing, they came by going to pray at the time of prayer. It was well in the afternoon, others say in the morning. But they were coming to pray. And so they found this man seated there. And the man was expecting to receive money from Peter and John. Was expecting to receive money from Peter and John. As you were coming to the house of God today, what is it that you've been expecting to receive from God today? What is it that you were saying in your heart, if I go there, I want to receive something from God. I want God to meet this specific need of mine. I want God to minister to my life. I want God to touch my physical body. I want God to minister to me as far as my needs are concerned. What is it that you've been saying in your heart? I want God to meet my I need today as I'm going to the house of the Lord. Sometimes it pays when you come expecting. The man was expecting and the Bible says he gazed at the apostles. He looked at them expecting to receive. Yes. Now I'm going to ask one free man who is ready to come right in front here. Bring your chair with you. And then uh, I'll ask two other men, Peter and John. You are not going to be Peter, you are not going to be John, but this is just to demonstrate uh, what we are teaching here today. This is Peter and John. They were coming to the temple during the time of prayer. Now, I want you to walk slowly, uh, Peter and John. You are going for prayer and you are going for prayer. Just walk slowly 
uh, and then you, I wanted to fix your eyes on them as you are expecting the usual thing that every time people must give me money now stretch your hands stretch your hands yeah, yeah fix your eyes and then uh, Peter and John are just coming and this man is looking at them he did not say anything and now we want to hear Peter saying uh, silver and gold we don't have silver and gold here right now now, immediately, when Peter said, silver and gold, Yevainan, this man was so much discouraged, but he never quit to look at them to say, why is it that you don't have money? <laughs> why is it that the Bible says he fixed his eyes on them? I want you to look at this, at this man, Peter and John. Look at them. And now we want to hear Peter saying uh, something. Uh, when, he said, wait, wait, when he said silver and gold we don't have, what else did he say? But such, but such, as, such as, we have, as we have, we give you, we give you in, the name in the name of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth. Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. <laughs> so your sharing elder is now walking. Uh, <laughs> now, as the man was expecting to receive money, the apostles knew they did not have the kind of money that would assist uh, that would assist this man. But what they had, they had Jesus Christ in their life. And I want you to know that every true man of God has something to offer to the church of God. Amen. If you are called of God and you are a man of God, you have something to offer to the children of God. He may not be in a position to offer everything. Here is Peter and John. They did not have money in their pockets. Their purses were empty. But what they had was Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, sometimes you see people walking around and uh, you, you think they, they, they have nothing to offer. But I want to tell you something. If you have a specific need, it is always important to be expectant Amen. to receive Amen. your miracle. Amen. Don't take things lightly. Don't take things for granted. Expect, continue to anticipate to receive your miracle. I said the other day, um, my wife was not feeling well the other day, and then she she said to me, um, I'm not feeling well. I want you to pray for me. I said, okay, let me pray. I not pray a very, very long prayer. No, I just prayed a very short prayer. And uh, I said, receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. And then she said, Ha! Huh. These few minutes, I was in dear pain. But now I'm healed. I wonder why I delayed to just to just to say to you, pray for me. I'm I'm okay now. I'm fine. And I've seen this on several occasions when there is a specific need, and then somebody talks to me, and and, and I, I speak back to them. I see God making it possible for that person to receive what they need. Every man of God has something to offer. If you, if you, if it's one thing to be called, it's one thing to be anointed for service. There are so many men of God who are out there, but others are not anointed for service. When they minister, they can minister, but there is no anointing for service. But I want to thank God for this one thing. I am anointed for service. Believe it or not, 
but I know what I'm talking about. God anointed me for service. If you have a specific need and you are expecting God to reach out to you, God will touch you. He will touch you. I have seen this happening. Peter said, we do not have what you are expecting us to give you. What is it? Gold. Money. Money. I don't claim to have everything, but I know God has anointed me for service. Peter said, money, we don't have. My brother, you may not be having something like money in your pocket. You may not be having a lot of giftings in you, but if God has gifted you for ministry, you have something to offer in the name of Jesus. The apostle said, silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we give you. Possessing the spiritual enablement is what makes a difference to bring about what we call the kingdom of God in our vicinity. The kingdom of God does not just manifest. The kingdom of God manifests when there is a need. The kingdom of God is not always flashing, flashing, flashing. But when there is a specific need, the kingdom of God manifests. At midnight, in a certain city, somebody made a phone call and they said on the phone, I'm dying. I said, what's wrong? And they said, I'm sick. My whole body, I cannot tell, I can't describe what is happening. My whole body is aching and I don't know what to do. Please pray for me. I've called to ask for your prayer. Pray for me. Pray for me. And I knew what the Lord had invested in me. And I say to her, I, I am, I'm calling upon the name of the Lord now. You are miles away from where I am, but I know that God is going to touch you. You see, when God touches somebody, he directs his anointing where the need is. Amen. Sometimes I don't need to ask you, what is your problem? I only need to declare so that your need is met in the name of Jesus. He releases that anointing to touch exactly where the need is and the miracle takes place. Just like that. Peter and John did not say, wait, we are going to run around and look for money. They knew it's important to know that I don't have this. It's important to know that I am not anointed for this. It's important to know what God anointed you to do. And sometimes because we don't know what God anointed us to do, we limit ourselves. But the moment you begin to know, the apostles did not exert desperation when they were asking for arms, for money. They did not say, shut up. Neither did they run away. They knew exactly what was in their coffers. They knew what they were carrying in their hearts. That's why they said, such as we have. You cannot give what you don't have. You can only give that which you have. You can only give that which you possess. And when we are ministering as servants of the Lord, we can only deliver that which we possess. Amen. When you have it, you can give it. Amen. If you don't have it, you can't give it. You can't. You may try, but you can't. You can only give what you have. So Peter, gave, Peter and John gave what they possessed. And that went straight, that anointing went straight to where the need was. The man was crippled. He was paralyzed. And the man received his miracle. The record that we have in the book of Acts does not say, and then the man said after he was delivered, now give me money. 
Why? Because what he was given at that particular moment was enough to address his need. When God comes to touch you, he will come to touch you right at the point where you need a touch. So he started screaming and jumping and shouting and celebrating. And the Bible talks there about the other people who saw him and they knew that this was the man who was always crippled. But what had happened? Jesus had already touched him. Jesus had already reached out to his need. What is your need today? You have come to church. This is a Pentecostal church. This is a spiritual church. What is your need today? What is your need? Do you know your need? If you know your need, are you expecting something from God? If you are expecting something from God, then you will receive your miracle. The Bible tells us, such as I have, I give you in the name of Jesus. Everything that we do in the kingdom of God maximizes the authority that is in Christ Jesus. It's not in bits and pieces. It's not in fragments. It comes in its full package. That's why I believe when God touches you, you know that God has touched me. It's not like I say to somebody, if I pray for you uh, uh, and I ask you, are, are you healed? Don't say, ah, uh, yeah, it looks like, <laughs> no, no, no. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like it looks like. When God touches you, you'll have a witness. When God touches you, there is a testimony about the power of the kingdom of God. When God reaches to you, you will know by the results that God has touched me. It's not about, uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I think it will, it will happen. I think, no, when God touches you, you will know that God has touched me. That's how the power of God works. And so, when the power of God reached this crippled man, he did not remain there shouting, lift me up, please, I can't walk. He did not say that. He responded. When God is reaching out to you and you are expecting, you respond positively. Some people fail to receive their miracle because of doubt. Some people fail to receive their miracle because they are always giving in reasons. Oh, so and so prayed for me. And so and so prayed for me, nothing happened. So and so prayed for me also and nothing happened. Oh, the, the, the big man of God prayed for me and nothing happened. And I don't think anything is going to happen. When you come before God with that attitude, definitely you will not get what you want to get. Anything with God is very possible. God can do anything. Amen. As long as it is in line with his word, God can do anything. There are so many people whose doors were closed by the enemy, but because of their faith in God, the doors were opened for them to have entry into where they wanted to go. Why? Because they had faith in the same God. I want to say to you, this man was not expecting to receive his miracle. He was not expecting to walk. But God knew that this man wanted deliverance in order for him to be able to walk. I sometimes wonder why God is always interested to use what is there and not ask for something that is far away. Why is he so much interested to want to use what is readily available? Because God wants contact. There must be contact. It must not some, be something that just happened like, in, like a wind and, and you don't even understand. You see, when you are sick, you feel the pain. You sense the pain. And when you are healed, you can still sense that I am healed because the pain disappears. That's why I tell people, when the Lord has not touched you, just say, he has not touched me yet. Don't say, I think it's gone, when it's there. Believe God, act upon the word of God, and believe that it is possible for God 
to achieve his intended objective by providing or meeting your actual need. Amen. The need here was not about money. Sometimes you look around and you say, oh yeah, I need money. I don't have money, I need money. But God is interested in using his anointing, the power that is in the vessel. And if you don't know how to tap into the power that is in the vessel, you cannot get what you want. And so for us to know how to tap the power that is in the vessel, number one, we need to be expectant to receive from God, not from men. More often, we look at men instead of looking and focusing and putting our focus uh, upon God. It is important to put your focus upon God, who is the supplier of all that which we need. It is important to put our focus on him who is able to supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It is important to keep our focus on the almighty God. Don't put your focus on man because man is not able to meet all our needs. But we need to put our focus upon God who is able to provide all that we need. When Abraham was in need of a son, all that he needed in his life was to put his faith in God and not in himself. Because putting him, his faith in himself would mean to say everything about him was just going to fail. But anything that had to do with God was going to be a success. And I want to say to you, anything about you and me may fail. But if we put our faith and trust in God, whatever we believe God for, it will definitely come to pass. So I say to people, sometimes you hear me talking about this, and then you eventually say to yourself, I don't think it's going to happen to me, but uh, maybe if it was so and so, it was going to happen. I prayed for someone, and, and this, this woman said to me, uh, evangelist so and so prayed, nothing happened. So I'm waiting for evangelist so and so to pray for me so that I'll receive my miracle. Uh, and he never turned up. But when I heard that you are around, I said, I, I think if he can just lay his hand on me, I will re recover. And so I have come expecting to recover today. I know so many people have prayed with me, but now I've raised my heart and started to believe the God who appoints and calls the pastors to come into his field. I'm not believing God for my miracle. Please just lay your hand. And from that moment, when I laid my hand, what happened? The miracle took place. The woman was healed right there from that spot. Why? Because she was expected. I remember the other time, the Archbishop, uh, Professor Ezekiel Guti, sent me and one of the pastors to go and pray for one of the members who, who was used to be prayed by him, to be prayed for by the Archbishop. So the member said, are you coming to pray for me? And Baba said, no, I'm, I'm actually busy. I'm not able to come, but I'm going to send someone to come and minister to you. And, and Baba asked me and that uh, pastor to go and pray with this person. Now, when we arrived, the person said, um, you, you've been sent to come and pray for me. And uh, we said, yes. Then the person said, uh, in my life, no one lays his hands on me except Baba. So if he, if he's, if he's not going to come and pray for me, I will die like this. Then uh, the pastor said, ah, let's go. We, we don't need to waste our time, let's go. So we left. And when we left, we went back to Baba and uh, we told him, 
that uh, we did not pray because the person is saying, uh, the person is expecting you to go and pray with her, not us. So, Baba said, can we get a phone, uh, phone number so that we talk to her? So he called uh, and he said, I have sent ministers of the gospel, full-time pastors to come and pray for you because you said you are sick and you refused to be prayed for by the servants of the Lord because you want me to come and pray. I am not going to come and pray for you. As you have refused them, you have refused me. As you have rejected them, you have rejected me because it's me who sent them to come and minister to you. So the woman said, Baba, please, please forgive me. Let them come back. Let them come back. So Baba said, can you go and pray with that, that, uh, that member? Um, she has repented. So we went. And we, when we got there, she asked for forgiveness. She cried. And then she said, I'm ready to be prayed for. Please pray for me. So I said to the other pastor who was with me, I said, you lay your hand on her. And then when he stretched his hand, just touching her head, that woman was down. And then he said, are you healed? And she said, yes, I'm completely healed. I, I felt that, that touch in my life. I'm completely healed. Then we say to her, this is exactly what Baba had sent us for in the first place. You were supposed to receive the power of God at that time, just as you have received it now, without questioning now that you were questioning, look now, it has taken you some more hours to, to continue in this pain. But now you are free, you are healed, completely healed. It's not the first incident. I have prayed for a number of people who believed that uh, God was not going to change their situation because a number of men of God have been praying with them and nothing happened. Brothers and sisters, when his anointing is there for a miracle, you will get your miracle. That's what I know. When his anointing is there for a miracle, you will get your miracle. I don't doubt this. You will get your miracle. I don't doubt this. What do we have? It's not me. It's not me. It's not me. It's not this, this picture you are seeing. It's not this person you are looking at. What is in me is the anointing of God that works through me to meet his needs. God is always willing to meet his people's needs. That's why even though the crippled man wanted money, God did not allow Peter and John to have money in their pockets. Maybe if they had money that day, they were going to give him money and the person was going to remain crippled. How long are you going to remain in that situation when God wants to perform a miracle? How long are you going to continue remaining in that state when God wants to show you his grace and love? The power of God is there for us to experience the miracles of God. God is interested in using what is there. The only thing that we need to know is we need to expect God to perform that miracle. Number two, we do not only focus our faith upon God in order for us to receive a miracle. Number two, we need to act upon the instructed word of God, the given word of God, so that as we act upon the given word of, word of God, the word will create the level of faith that demands for that miracle to be at our disposal. Hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm preaching, I'm ministering the word, and then after ministering the word, a young couple comes running. We're already 
in the, in the foyer, in the reception area at that hotel in Abu Dhabi. And then the young man said, look at my wife. She's heavily pregnant and I have been struggling because we don't have insurance. Uh, my wife is supposed to be going to uh, the maternity ward in a few days time for her to deliver. But this is her first pregnancy, and she has never been to a hospital since her life. I'm not so sure what's going to happen because I don't have insurance. But as you were preaching, the word that you were sharing with us is steering my heart to believe God for a miracle that my wife is going to deliver naturally if you can just lay your hand upon it. I say to him, when was he supposed to deliver? And he said, doctor said two weeks ago. Now the baby is growing very fast. And I'm not so sure whether she's going to uh, deliver normally or they have to do an operation on her. I'm afraid, I don't have the kind of money. But from the word that you've been sharing with us, I just want you to lay your hand upon her. And I said, lady, kneel down. I laid my hand in the name of Jesus and I said, Lord, let her deliver naturally, normally, without struggle. Guess what happened? That same evening, she was taken by an ambulance to the hospital. When she arrived there, she delivered nicely that big baby. Amen. The man called me the following morning when we were at the hotel where we were staying and he said, man of God, I want you to know that you have a witness right here in Abu Dhabi. I said, what is the witness? He said, my wife has delivered a no, a no more birth, a no more delivery. Nothing, no season, nothing, 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 nothing. And she is well. The baby is well. Thank you for your prayer. Now, when God reaches you at such a time when we have a specific need of that nature, you know there is no human power there. You know there are no tricks there. You know it's God who has reached out to you. I want to say to you, when you believe God and then you act upon the instructed word of God and you don't doubt that word, you act upon that word. You see, sometimes we don't want to act upon the word of God. We want to visualize, we want to imagine, we want to think and we want to reason. As we reason, we are filled with the spirit of doubt instead of having faith for the miracle. What is it that you need? Today, I'm asking you, what is it that you need today? What is it that you are saying, God, this is my need? Even if you don't know what is your specific need, like some people do at times, but you see, when God begins to stretch his hand, he just stretches it there to meet your need. Right there at your point of need. He just reaches out. Second Kings chapter 4, we read this story on chapter 4 from verse 2. This woman comes to the man of God and she says to the man of God, Oh, you know my husband feared the Lord. But the debtors came. They want their money. And I don't have anything to pay this, the money. And they, they are saying they are taking away our two sons. The man of God did not say, okay, let them come here so that I will pay them the money your husband owes. The man of God said to the woman, what do you have in your house? The woman said, I only have a jar of oil. Now, when you read in the Hebrew language, it shows you the desperation that this woman had. She was in that desperate situation. As she was in that desperate situation, she had nothing else to talk about except the little oil in a jar. The man of God knew that God 
was going to meet her need using that small uh, jar, that container which had a little bit of oil. God knew what he was going to use for the miracle to come by. So he said, can you go and borrow? Go and borrow as many pots as you, you like. Borrow as many pots as you like. And then she borrowed all those pots. Then the man of God instructed her, close the door. When you close the door, then start pouring. The woman again had to listen to the instructions and started acting upon the instruction. Close the door and begin to pour. She poured the first pot, the second, the third, the fifth, Oh, the, the, the sixth, oh, the twentieth, she's pouring, she's pouring until the twenty-fifth. And the bottles, all the bottles that had been borrowed were full of oil coming from this small jar, coming from this small bottle. Now I have this, uh, this is about uh, 500 milliliters of water here. When God wants to meet your need, this, this can be like a barrel of water. In your sight and my sight is 500 milliliters, but before God, this can be uh, 200 liters. When she started pouring, this jar was not getting empty, but it was able to fill container until all the containers were finished. Amen. What does this speak of? God is able to meet your need to the fullest. She was told to go and gather many containers, many vessels, and they gathered the ones that they were able to bring about. But God's power is not limited to reach out to the very level that you need God to meet you. If you are here today and you are saying, is this possible? Yes, it's possible. God can reach you. He can reach you at your point of need. This man calls on a phone and he says, I heard about you. Somebody told me about you and they were saying that Jesus uses you to, to heal the sick. And uh, he said, uh, I, I want deliverance. I want to be delivered. And I said, what is your problem? And the man said, I want to be delivered. I don't know what normally happens. My wife tells me eh, almost every night I wake up at midnight. And when I wake up at midnight, something happens to me. Uh, I eat meat, meat, fresh meat, dripping blood. And I don't know what causes this. And when this happens, I will always wake up so weak and sick and pain all over my belly. I don't understand. Whenever this attack happens, I know the next day I'm not well. So he said, I need deliverance. I said to him, I, I am about uh, 20 kilometers away from you. Are you able to come for the service? And he said, no, I'm not able to come but my wife is gonna come. I said, okay, you come. Um, if you have a hanky there, can you give it to your wife? I'll, I'll just pray for that hanky and I'll send the anointing. When you receive it, receive that in the name of Jesus and just claim your deliverance. You know what happened? The woman came, she gave me the hanky, I prayed, she went back with the anointing. And when she arrived there back home, she gave that hanky to the husband. And the husband, you know, there was commotion in the house because the children were watching. The moment he received that hanky, 
there was the power of God there and he, he started swinging in the house, swinging. And straight away he went down on the floor. There was complete deliverance. Then he called me and he said, what the Lord has done today, I can sense that my deliverance has happened. And since that day, he has never been under that attack again. He was completely delivered. You see, unless you begin to act on the God-given instruction so that your miracle becomes a reality to you, it will never become a reality. That's why sometimes things are not working for us. And we are asking ourselves, but why God, why God, why is this, why is this still on my way? It's still there because the way we act. Had he received this hanging and say, ah, I really needed a touch, a hand, not a, a cloth. Nothing was going to happen, but he received it. Number three, he received, you have to receive it by faith. You have to receive it by faith. You have to receive it by faith. If you need a miracle, you have to receive it by faith. If you need a miracle, you have to receive that miracle by faith. A man called in South Africa and he said, my wife has had an operation and the doctors are saying her chances for survival are very rare. What we are seeing is that she has a few days to live. And I said to him, do you believe that God can heal your wife so much that she doesn't need another operation. The man said, that is what I am praying for. That is what I am crying for. Because they told me that she has only a few days to live. If we operate her, she will still, she's still going to die because of this problem. We have operated on her, but she's still going to die because of this problem. She's not going to last. I said, but do you believe God? He said, yes. I said, call your wife. Let her come on the phone. I'm going to pray from this end. And I prayed, as I'm talking today, she's still alive, she's strong, fit, and healthy. God can reach you right at your point of need. I can go on and on and on and on and on and telling you a lot of things of what God is doing and what God has already done. And I believe that God is the power of God is not in a box. The power of God comes from his powerhouse, released to his people to meet the needs that are currently there. What is your need? You have been coming today saying in yourself, I want to go and hear God speaking to me and I want God to meet my need. When you have a specific need, it becomes your right to receive from him by faith. Don't doubt, by faith. You receive from him by faith, don't doubt. Sometimes you may sense some, some funny things in your mind, in your heart, and, and you feel like, oh, I don't think it's going to happen. I want you to know, it's possible it will happen. When Elisha said, feel the pulse, the woman did not say, ah, the bottle is too small. I filled this big pot, now there's nothing. She continued to believe that that little was not going to come to an end until it filled the pot. That took great faith for her to do that. Amen. If she received the miracle using that same bottle, you can receive your miracle using the faith that you have. I want to say to you, believe God and exercise upon your faith. Act upon your faith. God want to minister to somebody today. I'm not talking about tomorrow. I'm talking about today. God wants to minister to somebody today. Amen. God wants to minister to somebody today. The power of God is here for somebody to receive a miracle today. I was preaching in Botswana and I was with Baba Guti and he said, I'm not going to preach, you preach. I preached and then I made an altar call. As I was preaching, there was a woman in the pew. This family had no children for years. 
and they were struggling. But as she was crying there, the Lord showed her, and she said, the Lord showed her to come and get the, the, the facial tissues that I was using to wipe my sweat and, and, and just put it here on her, on her belly. The Lord showed her, and she came running, and I thought it, she was one of the hostesses. And then she took the facial tissues. She went back in the pew. And, and, and I continued with her praying the deliverance and praying with the sick. Then when we were done, we went back to Zimbabwe. After some few uh, months, the woman called through the pastor and said, tell the doctor that when he was ministering here, this is what the Lord showed me, and this is what I did. I acted upon what the Lord said, and now I'm pregnant. What faith is that? You know, some people are so far away from the kingdom of God, so much that they don't believe that God can do anything. When we apply the God-given uh, word of God, when we apply the God-given word, God is going to work miracles for us. What is it that you have in your heart, in your mind? I can tell you I've been going through a lot of uh, people who go through a lot of pain, a lot of challenges, and I've seen God reaching out to others. Now I tell people, if I pray for this one and this one does not receive healing, I'm not going to stop praying for the next person. I'm still going to continue to pray for the next person, and the third person, and the fifth person. I'll still continue to pray because I'm still believing God that God is going to minister to his people. Amen. It's his responsibility to minister to his people. It's not me. I'm just saying this to say, God uses what is there. <laughs> I'm here as a conduct person for the power of God. Amen. And if you need your miracle, God is here. He's going to use this vessel to meet your need today. Anything. God can do anything. He can do anything. That's the reason why Jesus Christ came here on planet Earth. So that God, through our faith, he will perform wonders. No wonder why. You remember the story uh, in the book of Exodus. Why Moses doubted that that rod could not do anything. But God just gave a simple instruction. He says, throw it down. Holding it is not going to perform anything. It is not going to uh, steer your heart to believe me for miracles. But he threw it down. Dispose it like you don't want it. He threw it down. What happened? It changed. It became a snake. Amen. God can do anything. Anything. God can use anything. He can do anything. Where are you? What, what, what is it that is bothering you? Where are you standing? What is it that is in your mind? What is it that is in your heart? What is it that you desire from the Lord for God to do for you? I'm saying to you, it is only in the name of Jesus that we give you. And if you are ready to receive, you receive your miracle. May we stand on our feet. If you are here today and you are saying, but Bishop, I have heard several prayers and uh, you even prayed for me the other time. Yes, I prayed for you. But if you have your faith today to receive, you can receive. You can receive because the power of God is here. And he who sends me to come and minister to you today is here. He is here with me. He's not far away. I can tell you a lot of things. But I know there is a reason why there is somebody whom God wants to confirm to this person that he is in favor. He is willing. He is ready to meet your need. Raise up your hands to the Lord, everybody who has been hearing the word of God today as I pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify and honor your name and we thank you, Lord, for your word. 
kwenga ga simbia tudere onene shango ha let honor and glory be to you a miracle worker the god who delivers and confirms his word with signs and wonders receive your glory receive your honor receive your glory this afternoon receive your honor this afternoon komela la shadi mukai let your name be glorified O god almighty in the name of jesus for you are able to meet every need in our lives in the mighty name of jesus Father God, for in blessing, I bless your people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. And may all God's people say,